in the entertainment industry, there's so many lanes you can take. I mean, as far as acting, being a job title, being a musician, uh, print work, like modeling. What lane do you think is most sustainable? Um, let me start with the first question at hand. Why did you choose acting? That's a really great question. I always say that. It's a really great question. You always ask great questions. I chose acting because it just, I don't know why, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I remember I was watching Inception. I was 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. And, you know, I had the, I had the goal of becoming a lawyer. Oh, really? Yes. I was originally going to go to school to become either a criminal defense attorney, family law attorney, some type of attorney. I was going to go to law school and everything. Oh, wow. Yes. And I, was, I remember even in my sophomore year of high school, my junior year of high school, I went to this career fair. I went and I, me and my friend, we basically shadowed the top prosecuting attorney in Missouri at the time in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And he told us about being a prosecutor. We met a judge. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a... This is very, he had like a stuffed bald ego, which is super illegal now, but that's beside the point. But I was, that was the direction I was going. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I was 17 years old. I was watching Inception. And Inception isn't, the, isn't a movie that's known for its acting. It's great actors in there, but it's not known for its acting. It's mostly known for its very confusing plot and how great the story is. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching that movie and watching Leonardo DiCaprio in his performance. And I've seen the movie before. Right. But for some reason, when I was 17, it just stuck with, me, stuck with me more. Maybe because I'm older, I can understand it. Yeah. But I remember watching that movie, watching Leonardo DiCaprio perform. And at the very end of the movie, as he's walking through the airport, if you remember that part, mm -hmm. and he finally sees his kids again, I thought to myself, I'm like, I want to be an actor. Mm. And then I thought, you know, it was going to be a short-term thing. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's going to die off. But then the idea, right. kind of funny because I was watching Inception, the idea just wouldn't leave. It just kept growing and growing and mm -hmm. growing and growing. And throughout my senior year, I was like, dude, I want to be an actor. Like, wow. that, that's what I want. Like, that's what I feel like I want to do. And, like, if this idea is not leaving me. Usually, mm -hmm. I have ideas and they go away. Right. You know what I mean? And... I don't know if you know this, but you know how there's, there might be many different types of people, but from my experience in life, there's two types of people. There are people who are geared more towards numbers, logic, mm -hmm. and everything, and there are people who are geared more towards art, entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I've always been geared more towards entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like, even when I was a kid, you can tell my mom this, uh, my mom would tell you this, I wanted to be an author, because mm -hmm. I was in love with Harry Potter, okay. Lord of the Rings. Oh, really? So I've always been geared more towards writing okay. or just the arts in general right so, but then i kind of ditched that in high school because you know trying to fit in trying to play sports all that stuff and then my senior year in high school was when i realized i wanted to be an actor yeah and then when we signed up for classes mm -hmm. my freshman year in college i actually signed up for acting for non-majors to give it a try right and i haven't stopped since wow yeah yeah that's that's great so How'd your, how'd your mom feel about you choosing this lane? So first, let me just start this question. When was the first time you mentioned to somebody that you wanted to be an actor? I was, <laughs> I was, uh, it was actually my senior year in high school, right before I left for college, I was dropping my friend Manny off at his house. Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling him that, dude, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And I remember dropping him off and he was like, okay, man, do it then. And I remember I told my mom, and my mom was like, Josh, as long as you go to college and graduate, I don't care what you do. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. My mom did not care what I did. She supports, so she supports me 100%. Right. And then my sister, obviously my sister has my back. And as I've told more people, I remember I told people in college, people were like, dude, that's awesome. Like, definitely do it. And that's just, it just, that's just how it started. I didn't st I like to keep things to myself because I don't know if it's actually going to last, but this was just an idea that stuck with my head from January 2013 mm -hmm. to May 2013. And then once I actually signed up for classes in June 13, June 2013 is when I actually started oh, wow. taking action. So it stuck with me that long. Dude, it stuck with me so long that I was a bigger guy. Mm -hmm. I got to show you pictures of me and my senior year in high school, man. I used to weigh like 280. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I lost all that weight. 
because subconsciously I knew I wanted to be an actor and I had to look like them on screen so I can't be big. So I went from like 280 to 200 in like six, seven months. Yeah, that's going to be our next topic yeah, actually. Yeah. Our next topic is going to be about how your profession can actually uh, change you physically, mentally, emotionally. And it's crazy how different professions, you just, your body just meets the demand, meets the demand somehow, some way. Subconsciously. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a joke here in LA, and I believe they have it in Miami as well, that everyone in LA is beautiful, everyone in LA is in shape and stuff like that. Well, the culture here cultivates that because the majority of the people who are here are here for entertainment. And so just with that in mind, a lot of their behaviors try to optimize them for this industry. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's interesting how that works. So your story's not uncommon there that, you know, you were, you were not in the best shape, but then you aspired to do something. And uh, the physiology of your body changed as well. And, you know, uh, so did your, your mental standpoint. You, you probably learned how to maintain businesses or start, you know, be confident in your startup venture. Um, so let's go into other aspects of that. So... I have a belief that every person has two or three people they're extremely close to in their family. Mine would be my brother and my mom. Yours seems to be your mom and your sister. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like they were comfortable with you going into... Uh, they trusted you to make your own decision. A thousand percent. You have to understand that my mom was the one... You know how they say your mom's always the first teacher? Mm-hmm. Your mom will always be your first teacher. My mom introduced me to movies at a very young age. Mm. And we watched Denzel Washington, Leonardo DiCaprio. Keep in mind, I had no idea who these people were. Right. As a kid, you're just like, oh, this is cool. And my love for horror movies comes from, you know, sorry, mom. My mom's probably going to be mad at me for saying this. We used to watch, like, horror movies all the time, like, weekly. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I know so much about horror movies, it's unreal. But... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's something a lot of people don't know. But my mom was the one who introduced me to movies. And I think that's when it subconsciously started to be planted in my head that I wanted to be an actor. Because there's no way that it just happened when I was 17. Like, that was something that was going on for a very long time. And my mom introduced me to movies. And me and my mom, my sister, used to have movie nights. Mm -hmm. You know how they always say families have movie nights? Like, it felt like almost every night my mom would come into my room. You want to watch a movie? Yeah, let's go watch a movie. We watch a movie. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what really got me into it was the was my mom introducing me to movies, even though she had no intentions of me ever trying to become an actor or anything like that. Right. It was just her love for movies was just mm-hmm. passed down to me and my sister. Yeah, her love for movies was, was contagious in a way. Yeah. So, so um, with that... I wanted to ask, there's just really two points for any profession, especially when you're in a, in a profession that's not, um, you know, not as traditional as corporate America. In this profession of acting, what moment, there's a moment you decided you wanted to be an actor, but where's the, what was the moment that you believed you could be an actor or that you believed you were an actor? When I got cast in my first short film. <laughs> and what year is this? This was 2014? 2014, 2015. And no, no, actually no. When I did a one act play mm-hmm. in 2014, actually. And it was for the school's theater department. Okay. And I wasn't even, um, I, wasn't the, I didn't have a degree in acting or whatsoever. Or right. I wasn't studying to be an actor. Good. So, but I still got casted in this, yeah. and I just remember doing that, and it was a very, very great experience. My, even my, my Pledge brothers came and watched me, Wow! and they said, dude, your performance was really, really good. Like, we didn't know you can act, man. Like, you're really, really good. Like, dude, you need to keep going. Yeah. So I still remember them showing up to my um, theater, or showing up to the theater and watching me, mm-hmm. and dude, it was... Um, they said that dude, we were chanting your name as we were walking out. We didn't like we didn't give a we didn't get an F. We were we were doing whatever we wanted, and it was just that confidence that they had in me and everything that really inspired me to. I I, I just I forgot all about that, but it just came out of my subconscious. But yeah, dude, that's what really wanted me. That's what really made me want to keep going with it. Right. Yeah, and this was performed from like a lot of people, dude. I was definitely nervous. <laughs> oh, I bet you. Were. I bet you were, man. So. 
That's great. So it was when you did that first play that told you that you could be an actor. Did, did it really different? Was there any like any difference between you wanting to be um, did that confirmation work not only for theater actor but also work for your desire to work in film? Yeah. So the moment the moment you hit that stage, you're like, I can be a film actor as well. Yeah, like film is always the end goal, but also I also like I love I, I also love theater a lot as well. Really? Because you have to understand that. Theater is the original acting. <clears throat> it is. And theater acting, they say it doesn't translate well to screen. While it definitely doesn't, there's certain things that, there's certain aspects of theater acting that you can use to help with your film acting. Right. And I'm happy I got started in theater acting. Mm -hmm. And I still want to do plays and everything. Don't get me wrong. I still want to because that's the original acting. And a lot of the British actors that you see on TV, they, they started off in theater because London... <laughs> is a huge theater town. Very, very different. They're the theater capital of the world. We're like the entertainment capital of the world. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're really big in theater. Basically, everywhere, like London is like New York, but I think London's on steroids compared to New York when it comes to theater. Oh, wow. Yeah. That makes sense why there's so many actors, not only from there, but so many actors that get like free training there. It's just, it's, it's in every corner. Yeah, it's way more, and it's way more, socially acceptable there to be an actor wow. here they always like i don't know if you ever encountered this but people what i whenever i would tell people oh, i'm going to be an actor someone would always say oh what's your backup plan you know oh, what really? i mean if that doesn't work okay. oh it's acting a side gig yada 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 mm. but in london or in england you tell someone you want to be an actor they're like oh really like are you excited about it yada 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 then they'll ask I you see. how you're pursuing it Mm -hmm. It's way more normal there because theater is such a huge thing there. Right. And I also know this not just from research, but my one of my old acting teachers from college studied it, studied there in England, and he told me how different the culture is when it comes to theater and acting in general versus here. You know, they think they see acting as an art and everything. A lot of them don't really have a goal of being famous, mm -hmm. but here it's like you know everyone wants to be an influencer. Right, you know what I mean. People want to be famous, people, but that, but that's because we're fed that we live in the entertainment capital mm. of the world. And I really noticed this. I think I talked about this in an older episode with Andrew Garfield. Yeah, how he says that when he does a play, people will walk up to him after the play and they ask him about the character and what made him, what made him make this decision and yada yada yada. People talk about the play, but when people see him after doing a movie. They like want to take pictures with him. They want his autograph. They want to. They want to touch him. Yada yada. They want to give him all this attention about him. And he says that that's the difference between theater and film acting. Right. Is that once you reach a certain status, he calls it the screen effect because once you see something from across the screen, you see that there's a separatism there, mm -hmm. and then you see that person that's above you. But with theater, it's more personal because they're they're actually actually in the audience watching them perform, where you're actually a part of the play. Yeah, and that's this is all news. To, this is all new information to me. This is all new stuff I like to hear. Um, not only I come to the podcast to share my experience, but I also come here to learn. Um, and I hope that everyone else who's watching is also here to learn a thing or two. This is Black Hollywood. We're, we're going to continue this conversation on next episode. Yes, sir. <laughs>